I want you to think back to last lesson, and we went right down to the buzzer. We went slightly over the buzzer. Okay. And um, we looked particularly at what happens when you don't just take any series, but you take an AP. Do you remember? We, we had the story, who was the main character in the story? It was Gauss and his lazy teacher, right? And he determined, okay, if I have this AP, okay? It is relatively easy to work out what is going on. His method was to pair up the first and the last, the second and the second last, and so on. Each of those pairs, if you recall, adds up to, have a look, 101. And how many such pairs are there? There are 50, good. So, we established this, right? Now, what we did was we took it more specifically to APs. We said that you could think about this in a couple of ways, right? Um, number one, sum of an AP. Uh, we had two definitions for it, or two formulas, if you like. Um, both of them were based around this pairing idea. So the sum, the partial sum, up to the nth term, started with n on 2, that's how many pairs you've got in the series. And what's there in the brackets? What, which way did Gauss do it? Yeah, just the first term and the last term, which infuriatingly is A plus L, okay? Now, this is perfect if what you've got is start here and there, okay? <coughs> so if you have handed to you the last term, you don't need to appeal to it. You don't even need to know what the common difference is, right? You just need to work out how many terms there are and there's your first and your last, done, okay? But of course, we know that APs have this structure and we sometimes know what the common difference is and we can take advantage of that. So if instead of knowing what the last term is, right, we substitute in what the last term is equal to, namely term n, t of n, which is, do you remember? A it's a, a, starts with your first term, plus, a how many lots of the common difference? A. n minus one, right? And that's where we ended up, I believe, we wrote this. Okay, uh, why are there two a's in there? Because you've got the actual first term, Right? And then you've got the part of the first term that is lumped in with the last term. Okay, so that's why there's two way. Yeah. So does that mean that with the second, um, the second sort of like sum formula? Yeah. Um, you you sort of assume in some way that there is an ending to your series. When we are, it's a good question. When we are talking about these things here, right? And there's a there's an actual value for m, right? We will look at what happens when there isn't a value for m. That's interesting in its own right. But here. It's a partial sum. We're defining these as partial sums, which by definition means they're, they're finite. Okay, so, so yes. Um, and in fact, both of them, both forms kind of assume there's a last term. There, there's an nth term and that's where you stop. Okay. So just to make sure you've got this in your head, right? When do we use this? We use this one when we know what the first and last terms are. Right? When first and last terms are known. Alternatively, there's a slightly different piece of information you would have in order to work out this. For instance, you could craft a question. How would you phrase a question like this without knowing what the last term was? You might say, well, yeah, do you want to have a try? Oh, just throw up 99 and 100 and say that there's like 50 terms. Yeah, okay, good. So if you know how many terms there are and then what they differ by. Okay, so for instance, can you add up for me the first 100 even terms? Okay. Now I know it's trivially easy to work out what the hundredth even term is, okay, uh, even number. The last one is going to be, that's not too difficult, bless you. But I don't need to know what the last term is. I know what the common difference is, namely two. I know what the first term is, and I can go ahead and do it. Okay. So I use this instead when I know <laughs> when the first term, there's my A in there, right? common difference, and what's the last piece of information that I need? Look at number the formula. Yeah, how many terms there are. Um, and number of terms is known. For what it's worth, I actually didn't write it. But you need to know the number of terms for the first method too, because you need to know how many pairs you've got. Does that make sense? Yeah. 